And welcome back to Astro Self Care Sundays. This is Kenya. We are back. I made it happen. Oh, you hear my phone? I always have my phone on. I forget. Welcome back. Um, I wasn't sure because oh, it's been so busy, but I'm so glad I made it back and I had some quiet in my house for a moment for me to be able to do this video. Um, we are doing a series. And so if you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for browsing and finding me. Make sure you are subscribed because I land on here. I'm making every attempt in my soul to be able to bring a video each Sunday related to astrology and self-care. Um, but I also have some other goodies. I'm a musician. I'm an artist. So there's also some music videos. If you go to the playlist, you'll see all the goods music videos. I also, you'll see something that says spiritual shift because I do discussions with my partner about that and you'll about spirituality and shifting and all the good things. I even talk astrology there um, at times. Um, you'll see some other videos from my podcast, Finding Your Voice After 40, um, which we're on a bit of a hiatus right now. So go ahead and binge on that. There's all, there's all kinds of good stuff. But on Sundays, um, in this space, I dedicate these pre-recordings um, to astrology and to help you better understand it, demystify it, make it accessible, and more than just understanding what your placements are, understanding actually what's happening and how you can use it for not just even self-care, use it for a personal growth, transformation, breakthroughs, I can't tell you how many times I have clients where I will do guidance readings and I call them astrology guidance readings. They're not just regular readings because there's a coaching involved in it. And literally I will have people say in this one session, oh my God, I learned more about what's going on with me than I've had, you know, in all kinds of other sessions. And it's not to negate therapy because I think talk therapy is necessary. I think though that we have to think about being more holistic and I mean whole meaning whole meaning we do talk therapy we do these more traditional spaces but we also do these other spaces that address more of our spirituality and of our soul and of our soul's journey and our purpose and those things right and our bodies and our minds all this stuff so as you see I try to keep these under keep them up to 30 minutes I try not to go over 30 um and we're doing a series on going through the different houses in astrology. So if you're like, what is a house? I am new here. What are you talking about? Just go back a couple of videos and I explain more what the houses are. But today we are talking about houses four, five, and six. So the fourth house, the fifth house, and the sixth house in your birth chart, in your natal chart. And I titled this Family Pleasure and Health. Whoa. Yeah. Astrology has the ability to look at all of that. And I'm really being quite general because <laughs> each of these houses have way more to them. But I think when, when we're thinking more broadly, those were the three words that just kind of came to my mind. There were some other words and I was debating. But anyway, that's what we're going to talk about. So make sure you are subscribed. Hit the button. Hit the bell. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you like this message, share or message, like this video, share this video. Um, I'm 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 crawling toward the thousand mark. I appreciate. I think since my last week, I was like, oh, we need 24. Well, now we need just 22 more. Slowly, we get we get subscribers. So we're building, we're getting close to that thousand mark and a thousand becomes a critical time. So I really hope that you will share this and like this. The more you like it, the more you share it, the more we obviously subscribers we get, um, the more uh, we get to our goal. And the more you like it, it gets more in the algorithm. So that's just how it goes. All right. So the fourth house in astrology, I put family. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and how you can look at your fourth house. And then we'll go into the fifth and the sixth. But I put family because the fourth house is basically looking at the parts of our lives that deal literally with family and, and, and that immediate family as well as that ancestral family. Now, understand this. Family 
may mean your grandparents, whoever was family in your household, whoever raised you, okay, whatever the home life was. The fourth house is ruled by Cancer and the Moon. Remember what the moon does, right? Remember the moon, and I did do a video about the moon. The moon is our emotions. It's the mother, it's the maternal, it's the instincts. So all of that is incorporated in those fourth house things, okay? It's also about literally mom and dad. It's literally about home, home about food, about the land. Um, and so that's what makes it have that ancestral factor to it. And that's also moon rules cancer. So if you can think of those, those characteristics of cancer, and think of those characteristics of the moon, then it helps you better understand the fourth house because that's, that is what it's relegated to. The fourth house is an extremely personal house. I mentioned about the first house being very personal. That's where our ascending is. Fourth house, very. The other thing about the fourth house, because it's such a significant part, part of the chart, is you may see um, either in the third, fourth, or fifth, you're going to see Everybody has in their third, fourth, or fifth their IC. And IC is kind of interesting. I'm still wanting to better understand it. I've heard lots of different ways people explain it. But I am noticing just in working with clients and doing deep transformational breakthrough guidance coaching sessions, when I'm hearing their stories and better understanding their childhood traumas, and um, we all have them, and you know, these are small T, big T, um, then as they explain things, I see that the IC is falling in that space. So it's, it's, it may be that part, the fourth house may be that part where, you know, this is where you started. This is your, this is your immediate environment. Okay. And so I will say this in terms of, you know, looking at your chart and deciding, you know, whew, remember we're looking at, if you have three or more planets there or placements there, nodes, points, whatever there, this is probably an area where a lot of the lessons are being gained. Okay. And then whatever sign is there, that's the way in which you're experiencing family, the way that you are relating to home life, um, to, to the, um, to ancestral spaces, to the conditions placed. And so because family, mm, it's so much of our conditioning and it's so much of the root of who we are, right? It is the root of who we are. Um, the fourth house becomes pretty critical. And I will say, you know, looking at your fourth house, give a lot of grace to yourself because there's a lot of karmic energy is also in the fourth house. And so when I say karmic, meaning these are these things that we came into this lifetime kind of just put upon us to see, can we clear some of this, you know, clear it from, um, other lifetimes clear it from generational patterns. So I have a very intense fourth house. Um, I believe my fourth house is that, yes, it, my fourth house has the most planets. So I know that so many of my lessons, so much of my development is coming from my home life and, and family life, parents, for sure. And also fourth house is looking at your home life, like your current home life. And, you know, my, my family period. And I've had a lot, I mean, my goodness, I, by far, by far the biggest lessons I have had that have been the most probably challenging for me. Um, but yet provided the most opportunity for growth were those things involving family and my home life and the roots and learning more about the patterns of, of family and me. So look at that fourth house, see what types of planets you have. I have some pretty aggressive ones. I have Pluto there. I have Uranus there. I have Mars there in whole house system. I'm not going to go over whole house versus the different types of things, but a lot, I have a lot going on there. And so I do. And then I have Libra there and Libra, like having all that with Libra, I will say the saving grace is this Libra is about balance and fairness and um, creating some type of equilibrium. So having all of those intense kind of planets activated, sitting there together, you know, I think, well, yeah, I need to have Libra there. Okay. In order to really be able to manage all of those energies. And so when I was younger, it was really tough. Um, 
Yeah. But I think as I'm getting older and, and cultivating my home life now, I've, I've, I've learned so much. So um, that is, that's the fourth house. All right. Let's move on to the fifth house. Pleasure. All right. So I call the fifth house, the fun house. Now, I don't know about other astrologers, whatever. I consider it the fun house, okay? Because the fifth house is ruling our literal pleasure, sex, dating, um, but children, um, creativity, inspiration, all, you know, creation, okay? Creation. Um, and so I find, and so guess what the fifth house is ruled by? So if I say inspiration, playfulness, look at me, have fun, inspiring creativity. That's Leo. Okay. So it's ruled by Leo and it's ruled by the sun. Okay. So it's a really, that's why it's, it's a lighthouse. It's a lighthouse. So I feel, you know, really grateful having such a woof, a challenging fourth house for me. This is what the chart does. This is what's so fun. You may have this one house or two houses that are just like, Wah! you know, in terms of placements or activity or lessons development, but you're always going to have a couple of other houses that are just like, yay, we're trying to balance the sound and create equilibrium and harmony for you. And so my fifth house um, is where my son actually exists. That's my Scorpio. My son Scorpio sits in the fifth house. And so for me, I think this is why sometimes I don't come across as, you know, I don't present as scorpionic in, especially in my, you know, in my high frequency spaces. Now get me on the low frequency. You'd be like, that's the Scorpio. But I think this is just my opinion as I've analyzed my chart and, and I encourage you to really begin to start studying your chart, which is why you definitely want to do a reading um, obviously, if you want to do a reading with me, if you look in the description, um, I do virtual readings. Um, I do their guidance sessions. So they're like a coaching slash astrology session. But you want to work with an astrologer or to be able to really understand your chart, because the more you understand your chart, the more you're understanding you. That's the point. Okay. And so so as I see, I'm like, oh, my son is there. That's why creativity for me. Oh my gosh. Remember our son is our light. It's our persona. It's where we radiate. It's where we shine. So pay attention to what's in that fifth house, because if you have more challenging planets, okay, or aspects going on. So if you have your Chiron there, if you have Saturn there, um, if you have Pluto there, then that those those concepts of pleasure, those concepts of if you even have the North Node there, um, those concepts of pleasure and you know dating and children and play and creativity and all of that may you may have some rub going on there that may be a little bit more challenging in your life, or you may feel like yeah I don't have I'm not creative. I, whenever I see people who have like a significant placement in their fifth house, whether it be Chiron or Saturn, usually it's Chiron or Saturn if it's sitting there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really creative. I'm not. Or even North Node, because remember, the North Node is where our soul is going. So a lot of times, particularly if you are before the age of 40 or before the age of 35, 30s, we're starting to shift into, hmm, where am I? Why am I here? Where am I trying to go? But in your 20s and stuff, you're definitely going to be more connected to your south node. So wherever your north node is, you will you may even feel like, no, nah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't rock like that. That's the point. Because the soul is working toward that space, right? So look at what you have in there. If you have Mars in there, um, there just may be a lot of passion about it. It may be a very empowering space for you. Um, in its high frequency. If you have Jupiter, you may have a lot of, you know, abundance and lots happening. You know, whatever is going on, you get more opportunities within those spaces um, in, its, in its high frequency. So pay attention. I have, like I said, Scorpio. I'm a Scorpio sun. So Scorpio is how I go about. So Scorpio, I'm in, you know, intense, all right, emotion-based, 
all right, when it comes to my creativity, right? And so again, the sign tells a little more how you have relationship, how you carry out the energies in that house, whereas the planets are the who, okay? My sun is there. I shine there. If you have moon there, then you're going to have a lot of emotional connection to those things around parenting, creativity, um, dating, those things. So um, if you have Pluto there, you're going to have a lot of probably transformation happening there. Lots of changes that may happening. And sometimes those changes may come by way of hardship, may come by way of challenge. Um, so Pluto is always, you may have a lot of loss and rebirth, okay? Because Pluto is asking us, to let go, to shed in order to make room for our actual growth. Um, so yeah, fun house, the fun house. All right. All right. Sixth house. Now I put health because I, you know, honestly, because it's YouTube and the algorithm and I'm like, well, if it says health and pleasure, maybe that's a key word. Anyway, it definitely, but it deals with health, kind of the day-to-day -day health. It's more the sixth house is about service to self and service to others and service to how we do our life. So a lot of times when you are seeing the sixth house, it may say health and work. Don't so much think about career per se, but think about work in the sense of your day to day, how you are of service day to day. Now that may in fact, yes, be also related to your career on how you go about doing your career because that's a day to day. Right. Um, but it, it, it also is related. It's, it's just so much more of how are you of service because the sixth house is ruled by Virgo. Okay. And Virgo remember is co-ruled by, you know, Mercury rules Virgo and, um, Gemini. So that Mercury, those thinking that how are, how we're communicating, how we are taking the skills, and using them to serve ourselves, And usually when we're serving ourselves, that's going to be by way of our health and not just our physical, okay, our whole health. So yes, when I'm looking, when we're considering the health of a person, we're definitely going to be looking at the sixth house. There's some other houses though, too, that look a little bit more for more chronic conditions um, around health. Um, and and more things that maybe are a little bit more hidden that we don't always understand about health and things that, um, you know, that may not be, they may be incidents as opposed to, you know, I've always had just issues, you know, with um, getting rashes on my arms, or I've always just kind of had this back tightness in pain and just always kind of lingers. So it's more of those kind of those, those not real, it doesn't necessarily have to be a really hardship health thing, but just the managing of health. But what can happen is because health is holistic, health doesn't just exist in this vacuum of just your body. And I'm hoping, you know, I, in addition to doing astrology, I am a professor, an assistant professor at a university. And I, my expertise is within holistic well being. Um, and so when I say holistic well being, I work with students not just learning um, about their bodies, but about their minds, their social health, their emotional health, their occupational health, their spiritual health, their environmental health, because that is all what's going to contribute to your overall sense of healthiness. Okay. So, um, when we are off, when we are misaligned, when we are not doing the self care, when we are not, um, taking the time to tune in and, and, and doing the meditation, doing the mindfulness, doing the stillness, doing the movement, then what happens is the body now starts to have to absorb these different things that are going on in our mind, the different stressors, the things that work, all of these things. And so it can show up as, oh, now I have this ailment, I have this dis-ease, which in fact, the body has been trying to mitigate. And so depending on what you have there, you may have a, more, a, a heavier propensity for whatever sign rules whatever parts of the body, it may show up. Because yep, astrology, Signs rule parts of the body. I know. I'm actually starting a medical astrology class this week. By the time you see this, 
you're seeing this. If you're seeing this right when it came out, it comes out on a Sunday. It's Tuesday, June 4th. That, so I'll be digging even more into this so I can talk more about this. I'm super excited about it. But um, but yeah, so depending on what sign is there, it rules different um, conditions in different parts of the body. And so if you are not being in alignment, if you are not taking care of yourself, if the stress, if the relational stuff, if the work stuff, if the mama stuff, if the and stuff, if the wounded stuff around daddies, all of that can manifest then in the body if we are not addressing it. And I admit, I'm saying addressing, not fixing, addressing. There's a lot of grace in the universe. It's not asking us to be perfect and fix. It is pretty perfect, especially when you start learning astrology. But it's not asking us to, it's asking us to journey is asking us to journey. So it's asking us to do the little steps, the small steps, make the acknowledgement, take the stillness, express ourselves, emote, embody. Then it's giving a chance to work it out so that it doesn't hold the space in our bodies. It's a deep house. It, every house is deep. But that also the concept of health, I, I, I so badly want to do more around health literacy to help people understand literally how the body actually works and how it's not relegated to just physicians or just healthcare professionals to understand with how the body works. It's kind of like reading liter like language literacy or reading literacy. It's not just up for the teachers to, to know everything about reading and, and literacy. You as a student, you as a parent, you as anybody, you also need to learn reading. Now, the teacher can help facilitate growth and facilitate expansion and accuracy, but you still need to know how to read. And that's what health is too. There is health literacy. No, you don't need to necessarily go to med school or go and become, go to nursing or physical therapy or whatever but you still should know your health of your body so that when things shift or things need to be taken care of differently, you are picking up, not at the point of crisis, you're picking up because you understand not only how your body feels, but you understand how the body works. So health literacy is really important. And so I think that the sixth house can show us a little bit more about that. Now I have Sagittarius in the sixth house. Sagittarius is all about understanding. I want to know so that I can give that information out. I want to explore. I want to look at astrology. I want to look at higher education. I want to look at religion. I want to travel. I want to understand the cultures. I want to do it all so that I can share. And I have it in the house of health, six house. Makes sense, huh? And my Mercury is there. Now, Mercury don't like being with Sagittarius because Sagittarius is fire. Mercury's like, hey, we need to think. We want steadiness. We want to be able to communicate clearly, take the details. Sagittarius is like, what detail? Let's be more broad. Let's look at the bigger picture, and then we'll get there. So, yeah. So look at what, what planets you have there because, if again, if you have these – these more aggressive or more um, planets that can push us into our more uncomfortable spaces like Saturn, like Chiron, like North Node, like Pluto in the sixth house, that doesn't equal, oh, I'm doomed, my health. No, it just means that if you are not in your higher frequencies, if you're not taking the time to bring awareness, then yes, it may bring up a hardship within health to get your attention, not to make you be doomed. Is just to get your attention to 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 work on yourself, to go through the journey, and to to do the small steps, and to 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 grow, to transform. All right, all right. So I have Neptune, which is a little tricky having in the sixth house because Neptune is a planet of it's called the great dreamer or dissolver. It can kind of be a little confusing sometimes. So I found people who have Neptune in their sixth house. It, when it comes to health and come, you, you really have to take a holistic perspective because there may be certain things that are showing up as one way, but there's actual another thing happening deeper. 
um, because Neptune, Neptune, remember rules Pisces, it does a more with the unseen and the divine. Um, and so it can be a confusing type of energy sitting there. So, and can put you a little bit in denial sometimes. And I have to be very careful with that. So those are our fourth, fifth, and sixth family pleasure health with a lot more. The other thing with the fourth or the sixth house I didn't talk as much about is work. Like how, how do we go about doing our daily routines? How do we go about doing, um, getting our chores done? That's also in, because again, of service, taking the skills and how are you being of service to your life, of service to your body, of service to others, of service to your life. So um, I find having Neptune there, who's you and Sagittari Sagittarius routine, what? Come hither? So it can be a little tricky, okay? So if you're that person that's like very like chicka, 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 methodical, you know, what, you know, it may be because you have a more earth sign there. You know, if you have Capricorn or Virgo itself there, like they're going to be working, you're going to be working. Okay. So, um, yes. Of how, how are you of service? So great. This, this is, this is fun guys. We're getting closer. you the next week. Ooh, the next one, seventh, eighth and ninth, seventh, eighth and ninth. There's some, there is some fun houses. So, so make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you watch next week so you know, okay, what we're we talking about. I'm not giving it away yet. Some of you already know what the seventh and eighth and ninth houses are all about. So if you have questions, put them in the comments. Um, thanks so much for, again, putting the comments when you're sharing comments. Um, and we'll we'll be back and we'll continue the series, but we're almost done. We'll do the seventh, eighth, ninth, and then we have 10th, 11th, 12th. And then we'll be done with the series of the houses and we'll move on to some more juicy things and fun things for you as you are learning how to use astrology or how to think about astrology or how to understand astrology in a way that you can use it for your care, use it for your understanding more than just placement. And again, you know, for fourth house, we're talking about family. So a lot of our healing, our childhood wounds and stuff, that level of self-care, look at what's going on in that fourth house. That will tell a lot about how you um, experience that. And so it could be helpful in thinking about, okay, what are some things I need to maybe consider doing given my childhood? I wasn't, I wasn't tripping like this. In fact, I had these things going on. Fifth house, if I'm struggling with dating, I'm struggling with wanting to add more fun or, you know, my parenting situation, you know, I feel like I'm being maybe too aggressive. Well, let's look at what's going on in that house and what is it attempting to, to teach us? I know this can be a lot. I think having an astrologer that does astrology like myself, one, because there, there are those of us out here who take a more psychological, therapeutic coaching kind of a perspective with astrology. I think that's very helpful so that, because once I, everybody's chart is different. So I don't want to talk too generally, but once I see what's kind of going on there, I, I, I can look at also where other parts of your chart are helping you to work through those lessons in that house. Okay. And then obviously the sixth house, I just mentioned, uh, I, I went into pretty big depth. So it's not again that, oh, I'm prone to, oh, I'm going to have this problem for the rest. Well, you could, if you stay in low frequencies in your life, if you stay disempowered, if you allow the ego to just go amok. Mm -hmm. But if you are seeking better understanding, deeper understanding, you're getting still, you're paying attention to the signs, you're paying attention to the voice inside that's telling you who you're here for or what you're here for, then all it's going to do is gift you amazingly so. All right. All right. That's it. I will be back next week. You guys take care and thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe and like and share. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.